Goddess Kring Radio. Shannon Kringen. Goddess Kring. Shannon Kringen. Goddess Kring. I want Trump. I want Trump to fire Trump. Fire Trump. Fire Trump. Fire Trump. Embezzling president. Guzzle that soda. Have another can. High fructose corn syrup. Diabetes in a can. Can't stand ya. Wish they would can ya. Lego. Oh, my, ego. my ego, Mar-a-Lago, Mar-a-Lago. ain't no Dr. Zhivago, flying to Chicago, to Chicago. To Chicago. Meeting, your meeting your shareholders, casino boy, bada boo, bada bing, banking on that tax on that credit plan, health care tax credit plan, can't stand ya, wish they would care. Can wish they you, would, can wish they you, would, can bam, 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 eat bam, more bam, ham. Bam, bam. Clog the arteries. Clog the arteries. Impeach the peachy arteries. keen. Peachy peachy keen. Peachy Leaning peachy to dreaming. To dream. Autism, 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 autism. Patterns, autism, patterns, autism, patterns, patterns, patterns. Embezzling, embezzling president. I love you, Bernie Sanders, you, Bernie Sanders and Jimmy Sanders Carter. And Jimmy Go solar. Save the way. Save the way. That ain't no joke. That ain't no joke. That ain't no joke. Goddess Kring Radio, Shannon Kringen, Goddess Kring, Shannon Kringen, Goddess Kring. Hey, this is Shannon Kringen, Goddess Kring, podcast number 30, and I'm going to make a preface to this. I will say that I feel very self-conscious, and I've been attacked and accused of being a narcissist lately. That's the, the most typical criticism that I receive. I am sorry. If some people think I'm a narcissist, I don't really know how else to be. I can only be myself. I'm an only child. I might be a little bit autistic. I'm very introverted and I'm introspective. And I really honestly don't know how to be any other way. Uh, I do give other people my services as a figure model. And I work with medical students. And I'm really good with my cat. I take really good care of my house plants. And I water them. And they're healthy. And I've had some of them for 15 years. So I think I'm a nice person when it comes to my cat. But mostly I hang out with myself. And I do have a boyfriend. But I don't think I'm the best girlfriend in the world. So let's just say that I'm Shannon Kringen, eccentric person who likes to do monologues that are very uh, much about what's in my mind and my inner world. And I hope that you get something out of listening to this. And if you want to share your story with me, feel free to write me with questions or comments and or record your own monologue and send it to me or upload it to the internet and I will listen to what you say. I know that most people in the world probably don't just want to sit in their living room and record a 60 minute monologue that's all about themselves, but I do. (laughs) So I can only be myself And let this Goddess Kring self-involved monologue be a permission for you, if anybody is listening, to be yourself no matter what they say. And if that's somebody that wants to do self-portraits and do monologues about yourself every week, feel free. If you're somebody who wants to just talk about other people or, you know, whatever it is that turns you on, you know, follow your bliss. I am an example of somebody who is doing what I enjoy and what comes naturally to me. And again, I feel very self-conscious and like I need to apologize. And then I had some people that say, hey, don't apologize for who you are, Shannon. Just be yourself and just let it be and let people, you know, take it or leave it. So take it or leave it. You know, I'm just not really that interested in the outside world. I mean, I just went for a walk and enjoyed the beautiful plants and flowers and the birds and I like seeing animals and plants and birds and insects and I like to take photos of cute little snails and and birds and then I saw a little heart and I just took a photo of like a little bobby duck thingy Mick Jagger and you know I love my cat he's in the window right now I just fed him some raw pork I feed him special health food from the pet food health food store. Sorry, I'm so repetitious. So I'm just, this is a preface to my show. So now enjoy the introspective monologue about why Shannon Kringen thinks she might be high functioning autistic, or maybe I'm just extremely artistic, which is similar to being autistic. Enjoy. 
Hey, this is Shannon Kringen, Goddess Kring. This is podcast number 30. Thank you to Holler Earth Radio for hosting me. And I also upload this podcast to Mixcloud, Patreon, and YouTube. And Bandcamp has the first 23 episodes. I can't seem to get that to work anymore, but... This is going to be podcast number 30 by Shannon Kring and Goddess Kring. And let me just tell you that I am a little bit stressed out right now. This is going to be an introspective monologue, which I guess most of my monologues always are. I want to give an introduction and say, I think I'm going to talk about challenges of trying to figure out why I'm so unhappy and so miserable most of the time. This is about personal self-exploration and trying to get a proper diagnosis for me in terms of my emotional challenges and my trying to figure out basically where I fit in in this world. Uh, I remember as a child, I always felt left out and excluded in school. I was bullied a lot and made fun of. And because I was just an eccentric child who didn't really know how to join in socially. And I'm right now a 48-year-old person who's been in and out of therapy since my early 20s, I guess. Since about 1992 when I was like 24 or something like that. I'm an only child of parents who divorced when I was four, saw my dad on weekends, was mostly raised by my mom, and I'm left-handed, only child, uh, Scorpio, earth monkey. I have synesthesia. I'm highly sensitive, which means that I'm emotional and very much affected by other people's energy and other, other um, the senses, the smell, the texture, the touch the flavor, plants, animals, everything. I'm very sensitive to patterns. And recently I've been thinking again about autism and about maybe I am a high functioning, mildly autistic person, which means that my brain is different. And I've actually gotten a lot of hate mail. Actually, I recently um, have been remembering some of the horrible criticisms that I've received basically since I was a child I've been bullied and picked on from time to time and felt kind of socially awkward and misunderstood and I remember I'm remembering uh, somebody kind of attacking me when I pointed out Temple Grandin and how I felt a kinship with some of the things that Temple Grandin was saying and for some reason the person reading my comment was mad and said, how dare you compare yourself to Temple Grandin? You know, she's really intelligent and has a PhD. And they proceeded to tell me that I was just some kind of loser or that I was grandiose and delusional about myself. I mean, just really mean, vicious things. And I'm like, why are people so vicious and mean to me? What is it that I do? What is it that I, it could just be that sometimes people that are very vicious and mean are just attracted to saying things to me because they can tell that I'm kind of childlike and maybe a little bit naive and not really good at being street smart and not putting up with people's abusive, disrespectful language. I also have kind of alternative points of view and I connect the dots in a different way. So I've, I've had trouble with people criticizing me for bringing up points of view that are not the typical standard. Um, you're either A or B. You're not allowed to be a combination of A and B. So this person, I was trying to build a bridge and talk about how Temple Grandin was saying that being artistic and being autistic might be connected and that there are different kinds of talents and that there are people that are really gifted with math or science or art or singing or dancing or acting and then perhaps they're very very bad at other things and almost retarded when it comes to doing certain things and yet very brilliant in other ways and how there's a compensation and I'm thinking that I feel I relate to that because I'm very socially uncomfortable I'm an introvert and I like patterns and I like to stare off into space 
and I get overwhelmed by loud noise. I have synesthesia, which means when I hear music, I see shapes in my head that move and dance. I associate music with texture and pattern and shape and color that moves in my head. And I feel um, alienated and excluded and left out and misunderstood at times. And I'm always thinking that I would like to learn how to communicate better. I have always felt like I didn't quite know how to connect with people in a, in a regular kind of way. And I, I remember seeing pictures from my childhood. There's one in particular what I, where I'm at a birthday party and everyone else in the picture is looking at each other and smiling and laughing and being really playful. And then for some reason, I'm sitting on the ground and I'm looking at my own hands or looking at my feet or I'm just looking down and I don't think you can tell what I'm looking at. And I have no memory of what kind of mood I was in when this photo was taken. But I might have been thinking about something sad like, oh, so-and-so doesn't like me or I feel left out, I feel excluded. I don't know how to belong. I don't know how to blend in. You know, I feel like the only way to blend in is to be a chameleon and adapt and act the way other people think that I should act instead of just being myself. And then I wonder who is myself. So my thoughts are very chaotic right now. And I, I thought I was going to make a concise monologue about my point. But I recently, in psychotherapy, I have been diagnosed as meeting the criteria. You see, psych psychological, psychiatric treatment is really not an exact science. And so when they diagnose you, they just ask you lots of questions. It's not like they can give you a blood test and tell you what kind of mental problems you have. All they can do is ask you about your childhood and your current life and then ask you a whole bunch of questions. And based on your answers, they tell you if the, you meet the criteria for different disorders. So I was told that I meet the criteria for borderline personality disorder, which basically just means that I'm highly sensitive and I was invalidated as a child and neglected or abused as a child. Mostly I was just neglected because my parents were distracted and just trying to grow up themselves and then they were trying to raise me and I feel like I didn't get enough of mirroring and and validation to kind of build my self-esteem in a very strong stable way but now I'm starting to think basically borderline personality disorder is there's nothing wrong with your brain it's that you have bad habits dysfunctional thinking patterns and dysfunctional physical actions that you do that as a child helped you survive, but as an adult, they actually don't help your life. So I've never been married and never had kids. And I'm always wondering, is this really by choice or is this because I'm wounded and I'm too stressed out to do kind of normal things that most people do? Most people get married or have kids or you know, I prefer being alone. I'm kind of a loner. I prefer, I find life a lot easier when I'm by myself. Uh, I am a figure model for a living, which means I'm paid to sit still and stare off into space and daydream, basically, and just hold still and hold a good pose while people draw and paint me. And I'm also an artist, and I love to draw pure, abstract, non-representational patterns and shapes and colors. And I do this very intuitively and it seems normal to me to just paint and do abstract patterns and make compositions. And I also take photographs and I, I compose in a very improvisational way. And so these are some of my gifts. But some of my deficits are that I have a really hard time socially and I don't have a lot of close friends. And I recently got attacked again. In my opinion, they attacked me. They judged me very harshly. And no matter what I said, it got interpreted as me being thought of as a narcissist and being a selfish person who doesn't care about other people, who is trying to make some point of view that other people didn't agree with and they thought I was just being self-involved, which completely threw me off because I, I'd like to think that I was trying to build a bridge or build a connection with these other people. And instead, it came off as they rejected me and I felt abused by them. And then they were like, you owe us an apology. And it's because they didn't like what I was saying. And I don't want to overanalyze it. Let's just say that I felt really misinterpreted, misunderstood, unappreciated, rejected, abused, bullied, attacked. 
And I know that they have a very different point of view than I do. And I understand that. But I am a human being and I have the right to exist. And so I just feel like I want to say that I feel like a misfit. And I was reading, I was just starting to think that maybe the borderline personality disorder diagnosis for me is, is just not correct. I also thought I might be bipolar, rapid cycler, and they don't think so. I've talked to several different psychologists and psychiatrists, and none of them think that I'm bipolar, meaning that my brain chemistry goes up and down, which has nothing to do with the pros and cons of my life, that it's just a random brain chemistry thing, which is totally separate from what's actually happening in my life, whether it's good or bad. So basically, I'm reading about females with Asperger syndrome, which is a form of autism, which is milder than, because severe autistic people can hardly even speak, and they have, you know, severe communication issues. And basically, autism is... I don't think they fully know what autism really is, but I think when they do brain scans on people that are autistic, um, they find that they look different. Like Temple Grandin's brain looks different on the on the brain scan. Her parts of her brain are larger and more lit up, and parts of her brain are smaller. And it's like she's really not good at certain things, and yet very brilliant. She has a photographic memory. I have a tendency to be very good at my artwork, my modeling, my jobs, but not really good at connecting with people in a close personal way. I'm very good with plants and animals and I'm very intuitive. And I love numbers and math and I'm constantly adding up how much money I make and looking at my bank account and just really checking the numbers all the time and adding things in my head and counting. And it just says, often people with Asperger syndrome are dyslexic and have other learning disabilities, and yet they're really good at other things. And I was just reading about some of the traits, and I was just like, okay, section A, deep thinkers. Definitely I'm a deep thinker, and I see multiple levels of things, and I analyze existence, the meaning of life, and everything continually. Serious and matter of fact in nature. Um... I don't really seem to be very good at simplifying. I I tend to see paradox and complexity in most things. I often like get lost in my thoughts and check out and do a blank stare. This is very true. It says, section B, innocent, naive, honest. Um, Finds it difficult to understand manipulation and disloyalty. Let's see. I'm just kind of reading. There's some of these things that don't really fit. Easily fooled and conned. Feelings of confusion and being overwhelmed, definitely. uh, Feelings of being misplaced or from another planet. Not literally, but yes, I kind of feel like I'm foreign. Feeling of isolation at times. At times, I feel so happy to be alone, and it's such a relief to just be by myself with my cat or going for a walk or taking photos or doing my artwork. Also, when I model, I kind of escape into a world of staring off into space and I'm happy that I'm earning money and that I'm getting paid to just sit there quietly and so that I'm, I'm comfortable with the structure of being around other people, but when I model is when I'm comfortable because it's quiet and the energy is focused on making art, but I feel frustrated because I have a lot of artistic talent but I'm too stressed out and I have a hard time like promoting my art in ways other than just putting it on my website for free. And I, I did a public access television show called Goddess Kring every week for 15 years from 1996 to 2011 on Seattle Public Access Television. And I feel like what I was doing was I was trying to reach out to the community and to the public And I was doing an experiment to see what kind of feedback I would get and what kind of effect I would have on other people. And I got quite a a lot of hate mail because I danced around nude with body paint and I would just talk off the top of my head about various topics, you know, politics, personal stuff, um, uh, sex, nudity, uh, healthcare, you know, various different issues and topics And then I would just make a poetry off the top of my head, you know, bada boo, bada bing, stinging rings the cring, catch the wind song, spiral drive, crack the code, left and right node, you know, 
intimacy chasing me feel like it's erasing me and just things like that I have all these phrases that I've invented and they repeat in my head over and over and over again fear of scarcity scare of fiercity in our fair city authentic ejaculation of my soul molten orange liquid glow anger takes its toll blowing status quo so these are like phrases that repeat in my head and I'm very repetitive and I have a very chaotic brain and I have a hard time um, organizing my thoughts. And so I don't know if I just have like ADHD or OCD, borderline personality disorder, or if I'm a little bit autistic, which means that my brain is different and I get overwhelmed and sensory overload. So yeah, survives overwhelming emotions and senses by escaping in thought or action. Now that is very true. Escapes regularly through fixations, obsessions, and over-interest in subjects. Very, very true. I'm reading uh, traits of autistic people, mildly autistic Asperger syndrome people. Uh, and I feel a kinship with a lot of these traits. And so I'm not saying this to objectify myself or categorize myself as a uh, label myself as a victim it's actually quite refreshing if it's true that I maybe have a bit of an autistic brain this is a way for me to accept the reality that in some ways I just don't know how to be like other people and I can only be myself and I've been accused of being a narcissist and I'm not really sure if that's true if anything I feel like a lack of sense of self and like I'm always trying to to feel like I have a self I think a narcissist would probably feel more like they're the only ones that matter and everyone's wrong and they're right and I am so great look at me I don't really feel that way I feel more insecure and more like I have talent and I feel unappreciated. I feel like, hey man, I'm talented. Can't people appreciate me more? Or can't I appreciate myself more? Can't I just love myself and enjoy being alive and feel like I belong on this planet? You know, that's kind of how I feel. And some of these people that I think were mean and ganged up on me, uh, I even said I sometimes feel suicidal and I have a lot of mental challenges that I'm dealing with. And I'm sorry that if you think I'm a jerk, I'm sorry. And they were just mean. They're like, get over it. We don't care. Whatever. Like they did. Like they expected me to have empathy for them. And then they were saying that I should just get over it and stop being so self-centered. And I feel like, well, that's really kind of cruel and disrespectful. So I'm just reading these traits of autism. Um, escapes regularly through fixations, obsessions, and over-interest in subjects. I have a thing about Tom Petty. Ever since I was 11, I've had a huge crush on Tom Petty when I heard the song Refugee. I ran over to the jukebox. And ever since that age of 11, I've loved the music of Tom Petty. And I've seen him live many times. I'm going to see him in Seattle with my dad in August of 2017. And I'm very excited because I haven't seen him live in about 18 years since about 1999. So I'm excited. And I... I um I use Tom Petty music to calm myself down when I'm upset and stressed out and I find it very very comforting. I fixate on checking my calendar and modeling. I I model sometimes 7 days a week. I'll work constantly to avoid having any kind of social or personal life. Escapes routinely through imagination, fantasy and daydreaming. That's definitely true, although I think a lot of artists are like that escapes through mental processing yeah I do like to obsess and think about things and try to figure things out um, escapes through the rhythm of words that's very interesting when I write poetry I feel like the repetition I listen to song lyrics and I memorize hundreds of song lyrics I know the the lyrics to a lot of Tori Amos, Neil Young, Bob Dylan, Tom Petty, Rolling Stones you know I know the lyrics to a lot of those um, bands music I love Pink Floyd I love Beck a lot of different musicians uh, mostly Tom Petty and Tori Amos though I have to say philosophizes continually I didn't have imaginary friends in youth it's it says imaginary friends in youth I didn't really have that but I had an imaginary audience in youth because I think I always felt like 
my audience would validate me. You know, my audience would actually listen to me and clap for me and appreciate me and think that I was a good person that had something to offer. So I had imaginary audiences. Like I would do little shows in my bedroom as a kid in my backyard and pretend like I had a microphone. And now here I am at the age of 48 sitting with an actual microphone in my apartment speaking to you, the audience. I don't know who's listening right now, but if you are listening, thank you so much for joining me. My name is Shannon Kringen. This is God, uh, Goddess Kring podcast number 30. I've been doing this for 30 weeks now, and I am just trying to figure out if I'm autistic. And I don't know if my psychotherapist will agree with me, but I am going to tell her about all of these traits. Let's see... I'm just trying to figure this out. Imitates peers. I'm not sure if I really did that. I don't obsessively collect or organize objects. That's for sure. Uh, mastered imitation. I am good at imitating. I used to imitate Mick Jagger a lot. I can imitate accents at times. I mean, that's kind of a gift that a lot of actors have. Escapes by playing the same music over and over. Yes, I've listened to the Tom Petty song Refugee probably about 2 million times since I was 11 years old. Escapes through relationship, imagined or real. I do think that I obsess over my mother and my father's personality and trying to figure it out. I obsess about when I'm going to see my boyfriend. And I also feel like I have a hard time connecting. Like my boyfriend and I are connected, but we're very different from each other. And I feel like I connect with him in terms of our sexual attraction. And I connect with him terms of hugging him and kissing him and feeling connected in terms of I don't know how to explain it I just feel like I'm connected but sometimes I look him in the eye and I feel like there's something missing and I don't know if that's me or him or our connection you know I look people in the eye and I, I feel like there's something missing it's probably in me like I don't quite communicate with other people, but then again, on a real deep personal level, but then again, I'm very, very good at working with medical students and making a lot of eye contact and giving them feedback on their physical technique. And when I model for art classes, my job is to not make eye contact and is to actually look at places on the wall, like pick a spot on the wall or a piece of tape and just look at that and, let, and hold still and let them draw me. Let's see, numbers bring ease. Yes, could be numbers associated with patterns, calculations, lists, time, and a personification. That is very true. I am very much into numbers and patterns, and I used to count in my head repetitiously. The number six is one of my favorite numbers. And six times six is 36, I used to tell myself. And then I, I look at my calendar a lot, and I sit there with my calculator, and I add up how much money I'm going to make, and I... I just kind of obsess in a way that I actually kind of enjoy and it kind of reassures me and comforts me. Well, for one, I'm making enough money to survive and I'm okay financially, but also just numbers and patterns. Like I'm probably better with, like I'm not good at alphabetizing things, but I'm good with numbers. And I, I, I still know my phone number for when I was like an eight-year-old little kid in San Diego. Escapes through counting, categorizing, organizing, and rearranging. That's true. I do escape through counting and categorizing and organizing in my head. Escapes into other rooms at parties. Now that's true, but you know, a lot of introverts do that. Cannot relax or rest without many thoughts. That is very true. Everything has a purpose. Yes, I tend to think that way. So for those of you joining me, I am reading off some of the traits of autism. Uh, OCD, obsessive compulsive disorder, sensory issues, sight, sound, texture, smell, synesthesia. I have synesthesia. When I hear music, I see shapes and patterns in my head, and I mostly enjoy this, but sometimes it's a little bit chaotic, and I wish that I could just hear music and not see any shapes in my head. It's a little bit overwhelming at times, but I mostly enjoy it. Generalized anxiety, yes. Sense of pending danger and doom. Yes. Feelings of polar extremes. Depressed, overjoyed, inconsiderate, oversensitive. I definitely have that, but I think of that as a as a compensation. Like I'm really sensitive and then the flip side of that is I become kind of numb and detached and I want to just space out and leave and disassociate from the situation. 
So I feel like that's a compensation to try to balance. Let's see. I don't have the poor muscle tone, double jointed, or lack of coordination. I'm kind of more athletic. I am not really very klutzy at all. I'm actually really good playing tennis, riding my bike. I'm a really good figure model, which takes a lot of stamina. I go for long walks. I used to jog, so I don't really have that issue. Eating disorders, food obsessions, worry about what is eaten. I do tend to worry and read labels on everything. I'm kind of a health food person. I worry about my liver because now I'm taking Wellbutrin again, and I know that's a little bit hard on the liver. So I would rather just take vitamins and herbs and, and minerals and eat healthy and exercise. I don't really have digestive issues. Chronic fatigue and immune challenges, don't really have that. Misdiagnosed or diagnosed with another mental, a mental illness. I guess um, autism is not considered a mental illness. It's considered a different kind of brain. I guess it's considered a disability. I'm not really sure what category it fits into. But again, I've been told that I'm borderline, but I'm not sure if that's really true. And they, they don't think I'm bipolar. And I'm kind of relieved about that, actually. I really thought I was a rapid cycler, hypothymia, cyclothymia person, uh, but they don't think so. And they think that my, my anxiety and depression and, and mood challenges is probably a reaction to some of my childhood traumas that I continue to have patterns. Uh, but the more I read about autism, the more I think I have some of these traits. Let's see. Wonders who she is and what is expected of her. Yes, constantly. I'm constantly like wondering who I should be, you know, and what, how do I adapt to these people and what am I supposed to do? And that's searches for right and wrong. Yes, I do. And I am comfortable uh, with the structure of work modeling for medical students and art students. I'm also very repetitious and chaotic, as you can see, because when I do these monologues, I have a tendency to go off on tangents and repeat myself several times. And I'm sorry about that. I'm just trying to express myself and get some of these thoughts down and record this. Let's see. Bouts of depression. Yes. Oh my gosh. Picks, rubs, fingernails, picks, scalp, skin, flaps, hands, rubs hands together, tucks hands under between legs, keeps closed fists, places in circles, clears throat. I do all of those things, but I don't, well, I don't pick my fingernails, but I have a tendency to sometimes pick my scalp sometimes, and I definitely have closed fist thing that I do. I don't really pace in circles. I do clear my throat a lot, but I don't know if that means I'm autistic that seems kind of like a thing that a lot of people probably do. Social interaction. Friends have ended friendship suddenly without female uh, understanding why. And I've, yes, I have a lot of um, people have ended their friendship with me abruptly and I have ended my friendship with them abruptly. And I think I partly know why there's certain uh, conflicts I've had with people where I hurt their feelings and then I said I was sorry and they never forgave me and that was the end of that friendship or vice versa. They hurt my feelings and then I decided, well, it's too hard to be friends with this person. So I'd rather just not be off by myself again. So I do have trouble making friends. Uh, most of my friends from childhood I'm no longer communicating with much anymore. I'm friends with them on Facebook, but they don't seem to talk to me very much and I don't know if they're mad at me or weirded out by me or what. Tendency to overshare. Definitely. Here I am on a public website spilling my guts, but I don't know if this is oversharing or is this healthy for me to actually be honest. You know, I'm a human being. My name is Shannon Kringen and I'm wondering if I'm autistic. So I'm just telling you this. I'm just being honest. And again, I'm not saying this because I want to say that I'm a victim. I'm just trying to, to figure out is part of my problem in fitting in in this world and figuring out how to connect and where I belong in the world. Is it partly because I might have some of these autistic traits and therefore my brain is a little bit different. And so for me to, to be happy and healthy in my life and love and accept myself and be the best me that I can be so that I can contribute to the world and the best of my ability. It might help me to know that I might be autistic. So monopolizes conversations at times. Yes, here I am doing a monologue. This is not even a conversation. This is Shannon Kringen doing a monologue. Spills intimate details to strangers. That's what I'm doing right now. Um, 
bring subject back to self. Definitely, I tend to bring the subject back to myself and how it relates to me. And my fantasy is always like when I got myself in trouble recently online with people talking about controversial issues is that they were accusing me, oh, there you go again, you're so self-centered. And I was trying to build a bridge with these other people and my fantasy was that I would say, oh, well, I feel like this. And then I wanted the other person to say, oh, well, I feel like this. And this is how I relate to that. And that they wouldn't be mad at me. They would just think that I was contributing what I know. Because I can't speak for other people. I can only speak for myself. And so I feel like if I speak for other people, to me, that's kind of offensive. And if I talk from my own perspective, to me, I'm being honest and respectful. And I'm not trying to be like totally self preoccupied. So I basically get interpreted in such a negative way. And I find it very upsetting. And I feel rejected, abandoned, excluded, left out, misunderstood, unappreciated. It's very painful. <sighs> Comes across at times as narcissistic and controlling. I don't think I come across as controlling, but definitely people have told me that, that I might be a narcissist and which I find very painful. And I wonder sometimes, am I a narcissist? If I am, I'm the kind that's insecure and wants to apologize and wants to get my point across and be understood and be appreciated. I'm not the kind that is, thinks that I'm better than other people or that nobody else matters except me. I definitely don't feel that way. Shares in order to reach out. Um, yes, but I'm not sure why else would I be sharing? You know, why else do people share except to reach out? Often sounds eager and overzealous or apathetic and disinterested. Not sure about that. Holds a lot of thoughts, ideas, feelings inside. That's true. Maybe not when I spill my guts on this podcast or in my artwork or when I ramble on online on my, on my um, social media blogs. I have like five different blogs and I definitely share a lot there. At least I used to share a whole lot. Don't share as much anymore. But in person with people, I don't really share tons and tons. I do tend to hold back and I'm kind of uh, quiet. Obsesses about potential potentiality of a relationship with someone, particularly of love interest. I'm not sure if I do that. Confused by the rules of accurate eye contact, tone of voice, uh, proximity of body, body stance, posture. I'm not sure about that. Conversations are often exhausting. Sometimes, yes. Questions or actions of act, behaviors of self and others. Let's see. Okay, I need to just keep reading this. So I'm just wondering if I'm autistic. Sense of humor, quirky, odd, inappropriate, different from others. That's true. Hard to know when it was my turn to talk as a child, perhaps. Ref finds refuge when alone. That's very, very true. I do find it comforting knowing that I don't have to go anywhere or be anywhere or even look at my, my clock. Sensitive to sounds, intuitive. I mean, there's just all this, this list go on and on and on. Feels trapped between wanting to be herself and wanting to fit in. That's very true. Suppresses two true wishes. That is very true. Um... Adapt self in order to avoid ridicule. That's partly true. Reject social norms and or question social norms. That's very true. Feelings of extreme isolation. Well, that's, that's uh, sometimes when I'm alone, I feel very, very good and happy and it's a relief. But when I think about my lack of close friends and my social life, I do feel sad. And again, I feel left out, excluded unappreciated, like I don't quite know how to connect with other people. Uh, when somebody hurts my feelings, I don't really know how to stand up for myself. And then they end up telling me I'm a jerk. Whenever I try to stand up for myself, they just say, oh, you're so self-centered. You know, you're such a jerk and, you know, get over yourself or whatever. I mean, that's really mean. And I'm thinking, okay, I'm either talking to the wrong people or I am maybe saying things that is triggering their anger. And maybe I, I need to learn to be a better communicator. <sighs> Feeling good about self takes a lot of effort and work. That is very true. I tend to be very hard on myself. Switches preferences based on environment and other people. To some extent, that's true. Switches behavior based on environment. And okay, I already said that. Um, oh, switches behavior and preferences based on environment and other people. That's true. I feel kind of like a chameleon and I, I adapt. 
That's kind of why I like being alone too, because when I'm alone, then I can just relax and be myself. And when I'm around other people, I feel like I'm supposed to be who they want me to be and be cooperative and be helpful. And I find that a little bit exhausting. So freaks out, but doesn't know why until later. That's very true. I seem to have a delayed reaction to some things. And confusion, has a hard time learning that others are not always honest. That's very true. Sometimes jokes, yeah, like sometimes I understand my dad has an amazingly clever sense of humor like George Carlin and Steve Martin and Richard Pryor and really good comedians like that. And so I was raised with like uh, my dad saying a lot of really funny things around me, but I didn't always understand. I don't always understand regular conventional jokes. And yet I'm an intelligent person, but sometimes people will tell a joke and I'm like, I don't get it. You know, I just don't get it. So they have to explain to me what it means. Confused when others ostracize, shun, belittle, trick, and betray. Yes, I get very upset when people do that to me or anyone else. I don't like it when other people get bullied or picked on or made fun of. I don't like that. Even if they're rich and famous people that probably don't really care, I still don't like it when people get made fun of and are picked on. Um, feel sorry for someone who has persecuted or hurt her. I don't know about that. No, I feel sorry for myself when someone hurts me. Um... Yeah, I don't know. So I don't know. I know that I go numb when I get overstimulated. I kind of numb out. And I don't really know. So I'm just trying to figure out words, numbers, and patterns. So I'm trying to figure out if I'm autistic and I'm just reading all of these traits. And I think the next time I see my therapist, I'm going to bring this up. And I want to talk about how some of the traits of autism probably uh, overlap with some of the traits of just being highly sensitive and or being borderline. So I'm just trying to figure out if the kind of therapy I'm in might be better served to me if they, f if they knew that maybe I'm autistic. I welcome all questions and comments. I don't really know how many people listen. I rarely get feedback. And if anything I say upsets you, I'm very sorry. I'm trying to speak from a place of authenticity and kindness and compassion and diplomacy. And I don't want to upset anyone, but I also want to be honest and exercise free speech in an ethical way that's respectful. So I'm only really speaking from my own perspective and I don't speak for anyone other than myself. Thank you for listening. And now here's some clips that I recorded in my little anchor website, which are like sort of like the audio version of Twitter. Hey, this is Shannon Kringen, Goddess Kringen, Seattle, and I'm just having more insights on the fact that I might be on the autism spectrum to some extent. I think I'm very, very high functioning. I just feel a little bit sad realizing that if my family had realized that perhaps I was autistic and I would have gotten more help with school and my social problems, perhaps I would be a lot more successful right now. Um, I am very successful at my career as a figure model. I've been doing that for 25 years, and that's a lot of hard work, and I'm very good at it. And I think because I might be a bit autistic, that's partly why I'm so patient, because I love to stare off into space and hold still and let people paint and draw. And for some reason, I'm not too shy to be nude in front of people at all. I'm totally fine with it. So uh, for some reason, I have the courage to do that. And I did my TV show, Goddess Kring, for many years and spilled my guts on video because I wanted to connect with people. So I've always had a strong desire to connect with people and see how they affect me and how I affect them because I feel like I'm confused a lot of the time about who I am and what I want. And I realize now my whole life is flashing before my eyes. You know, I'm 48 and I grew up in California in the 70s. And, in, you know, kindergarten, let's see, I was like, in 1974, I was in kindergarten or 73. I think in 73 or 74, I was in kindergarten. And I don't know if they knew much about autism back then. But I just listened to another Temple Grandin talk. She's an amazing autistic woman who's extremely intelligent, and she's an expert on annual behavioral science. And I saw her live at Microsoft a couple years ago, and I'm going to see her live again with my dad near Seattle 
on Vashon Island in June, and she's going to talk about animal behavior. And she's an expert on that, and I'm just feeling like I really love animals, and I'm really good with animals. I kind of think like an animal. I sniff all the time. I sniff everything. I'm very attuned to my senses, the sense of, of smell and touch and sound and the texture of things and the taste of things. And I'm very um, auditorily oriented. I'm not really as visual, actually, as I am tuned into sound and smell. And when I do my visual art, I have no idea what it's going to look like until I create it. But I respond to what I see when I take photos. And the autism is, I have artistic gifts with autism. If I ha I'm pretty sure that I'm a bit autistic, although I think I'm very high functioning. So I'm way, way, way on the mild end of the spectrum. But socially, I have all kinds of issues. I don't really have close friends. I don't know if I even want close friends. And I feel kind of like that's weird. But I want to stop judging myself for being who I am. I love living alone. And most of the things that I enjoy doing by myself, when I'm not feeling sorry for myself, for feeling like I'm left out and excluded and I don't belong anywhere, I actually really enjoy being with myself, with my cat, with plants and animals, doing my artwork, recording my voice. So I'm trying to figure out um, what the truth is about me, but I know that I have a certain kind of social awkwardness and eye contact is hard for me and noises really startle me. And I feel like very um, flooded with feelings and overwhelmed. And it's really hard for me to communicate directly with people in the moment and then I need to process what they say, and then it seems like I figure out later how I really think and feel about what they said. And then I, like, record it. Like, I might, like, make recordings for my therapist and then play them for her and say, this is what I really think, or write notes down and read them out loud to her and make sure that I remember to read them because when I'm around people, I sometimes forget and get nervous about what I was really going to say. I seem to understand other people although I do get confused pretty easily and I need people to explain things very clearly to me, what I've noticed is that people say they can't read me, that I have a blank stare on my face and they're not really sure where I'm coming from and they're not reading me. And I feel kind of like a chameleon that kind of just adapts to other people. Like sometimes I feel like I don't have a self. So I'm trying to figure this out. So thank you for listening. Just more insights on my personality or my the way my brain works. Hey, Shannon Kringen, Goddess Kring again. I just thought of something else. I feel like when I was a child, I was an only child uh, of these two parents that met um, when they were really young in college, and then they dropped out of college to have me, and then they got divorced after four years. Um, my, the, the adults around me were kind of busy and, you know, busy with their own lives. And for some reason I was withdrawn and I was labeled as shy as a kid. I, I was told I needed to make more eye contact and I need to sit up straight. And I remember feeling like I was, I wasn't okay. Like the adults kept telling me I needed to sit up straight and make eye contact. And I feel like it was never really addressed. Why is it that I'm having a hard time making eye contact? They just said, make more eye contact. You got to make more eye contact. And then I would come home from school school and tell my mom, mom, I, mommy, I feel excluded. I feel left out. And then she would say, well, you just have to go make friends. And I just feel like, and then my teachers said as a kid um, that I needed to ask for help and that I tended to just sit there and look confused and like as if I thought I wasn't supposed to ask for help. And I feel like the adults around me tried to kind of help me deal with these issues. And, and at school, I, I had some friends, but I was mostly kind of a loner and I used to roller skate a lot by myself, which I love doing around the neighborhood in San Diego. I used to play by myself a lot. I actually made more friends when my mom pulled me out of public school where everybody was supposed to conform and be the same and um, do popularity contest games, which I was not good at. And I got bullied. And then when my mom put me in alternative school, I was friends with older kids and I was friends with different, a variety of aged kids and people from different countries. And I liked that a lot better. And we got individualized learning with teachers one-on-one, -on -one, more specialized learning where they treated each of us like an individual instead of trying to lump us all together and treat us like we were going to march to the meat grinder, like in that movie Pink Floyd, The 
wall. We don't need no education, that kind of idea. Uh, is, is how I think of certain public schools that are into conforming, and they emphasize that, like everyone's a robot. But the alternative schools my mom put me into were really good for me, and they emphasized art, and we learned the truth about Native American Indians. I was going to say, too, when I talk to people, I love doing these monologues online, because in person I'm the same. I mean, people who know me, like my mom and my dad and a couple of my friends, realize I don't let them get a word in edgewise, which is another f sign of autism. When you do monologues and you get all excited and you just want to talk and talk and talk and then people think you're a narcissist when actually you're just caught up in your own world and you're just trying to share and you're you're wanting to connect and and you're hoping that the other person will reciprocate uh but i notice that i don't really listen to other people and i'm i don't even know if i'm that interested in other people uh so it's a little bit sad that i'm so into my own world that um I guess common interests with other people or when I date somebody and I have sex with them, then I guess I feel more connected to the other person. And I do like uh, massage and sex and like, touching in that way, but I'm not a big touchy-feely, go around and hug everybody kind of person, although I like to hug people. But I'm just having more insights on my personality and my, my quirks. And I really do things in a particular way, repetitiously. Again, I'm a good figure model. I'm also a really talented artist with my abstract um, visual art and my photography. But I haven't really tried to do much with that professionally other than showing in galleries here and there. Never really um, gone into a lot of juried shows and competitions. But I, I did win some scholarships in high school a long time ago and I have sold quite a bit of my art off and on throughout the years and I self-published a book called Art Identity and the Sacred and I sold $300 worth of copies of that I'm very proud of that self-published book and I have a, you know, I got my driver's license in my 40s and I was afraid, but I did it anyway. And I got my, finished my bachelor's degree in my 40s. And I, I don't know, it's like I've accomplished some things. But I, again, I feel like I'm very artistically talented, but I feel like for some reason I don't. And I also have very low self esteem, especially in my love life. I'm dating somebody right now. I've been dating him for two and a half years, but I'm not really sure if we're fully compatible, but I feel lucky to date anyone at all. So it's sad that I have such low self-esteem in my love life. I've also gotten into a lot of trouble with people online talking about political issues. Sometimes people get really mad at me and I, I just don't know how to handle it and I feel like I get bullied sometimes because I have an unusual point of view and I connect the dots. So, thanks for listening. I'm to Goddess Kring here in Seattle. Can you hear the water that's lapping up near me? I live kind of near Lake Washington in Seattle, and I walked down to the water. I'm feeling a little bit upset about some of the family boundary issues that I have with both of my parents, and I am trying to realize that as a 48-year-old who lives by herself and is fully employed and independent, that I am okay, and that whatever my emotions are towards my mother and my father and towards my own self-identity is okay. I'm dating a man, and I don't know if I'm fully compatible with him, and maybe that's okay, because I think I need to learn how to be compatible with myself, actually, if that makes sense. I need to learn how to make peace with myself and try to figure out how I can accept myself as I am with my flaws and also with my talent because I'm somebody who has kind of an odd self-esteem. I actually feel ashamed of my talent and my beauty right along with feeling ashamed of my flaws and my my problems and my warts, if, if you, you know, so to speak, my warts. So I feel like if I do too well at something and if I show off my talent or my beauty, then people will say, oh, you're so full of yourself. You're so narcissistic. And then if I acknowledge what's wrong with me and point out my flaws, well, then people also say, oh, you're so narcissistic. Or they say, oh, you know, that's really, you know, you're just trying to get attention or you're just trying to make us feel sorry for you or whatever. So I guess the bottom line is maybe I do share too much online or maybe Maybe, maybe I need to just get over this worrying about if I'm narcissistic or not and just try to take good care of myself and know that me sharing things online like I'm doing right now 
might help some other people. So if anybody listening to this is, is helped by it, I am very grateful and very glad. And I hope that I can at least be helped by what I'm saying to myself. I actually just called the crisis line and talked to a really nice man who volunteers at the crisis line. And he talked me through a few things about self-care and about forgiving myself for feeling guilty for not doing what someone in my family wants me to do and to try to um, not try to figure everything out right now and just take a walk and enjoy the sunshine and the water and realize that we're all on this planet together and I would like to think that we're all we all can grow and learn and heal and I hope that that's what I'm trying to do so I wish that I could learn to relax and not be so hard on myself. Again, I have a full-time job as a freelance art model, and I work for medical schools and art schools, and I'm very busy, and I'm very grateful. And I just had a blood test, and my cholesterol level is great, and my, my thyroid is fine, and my liver and my kidneys, and I think everything about my blood seems healthy according to the blood test results. And I just started taking Wellbutrin a few weeks ago, and there's just a lot of good things in my life. I have a cat and a boyfriend and a safe apartment. I'm so grateful. I know that there's more and more and more homeless people in the United States, and it's very upsetting to me. So I don't know what I can do to, like, save the world. I'm just trying to figure out how I can be okay with myself and my family and make peace with the fact that I really don't have close friends, but that's a choice, and that's a choice that I've made, I guess, so far in life. So thank you for listening. Have a wonderful day. I hope that you can hear the water that's lapping next to me. I like the way it sounds. And there's an airplane flying overhead. I'm here in Seattle. This is Shannon Kringen, Goddess Kring. Check out my website, <laughs> shannonkringen.com. There I go promoting myself. See, some people think it's cool that I promote myself, and other people think it's shameful. So, I don't know. I'm a person named Shannon Kringen, and I make art, and I just like to share. So, if you're interested, look at my website, shannonkringen.com. And if not, then don't. Have a wonderful day, and feel free to tell me your story and share what you want to share with me. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. I want Trump. I want Trump to fire Trump. Fire Trump. Fire Trump. Fire Trump. Embezzling president. Guzzle that soda. Have another can. High fructose corn syrup. Diabetes in a can. Can't stand ya. Wish they would can ya. Lego my ego. Mar-a-Lago. Ain't no Dr. Zhivago. Flying to Chicago, to Chicago, to Chicago, meeting your shareholders, casino boy, bada boo, bada bing, banking on that tax on that credit plan, health care tax credit plan, can't stand ya, wish they would can ya, bam bam bam, eat more ham. Clog the arteries. Clog the arteries. Impeach the peachy keen. Leaning to dreaming. To dream. Autism, 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 autism. Patterns. 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 Embezzling, Embezzling president. president. I love you, Bernie Sanders, you, Bernie Sanders and Jimmy Sanders Carter. And Jimmy Go solar. Save, Save the way. Save the way. That ain't no joke. That ain't no joke. That ain't no joke. Jealousy, Jealousy. Envy. 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 Shine. Shine. Do your best. Do your best. Tame the shame. The shame. Damned if you do. Damned if you do. Damned if you don't. Just do it, lady. Just do it, Just do it, Jester. Do your best. Do your best. Contribute. Contribute. Let others appreciate or not. Or not. Their choice. Their choice. Your choice. Your choice. My choice. My choice. Some jealous. Some jealous. Some envious. Some envious. Some not agreeing. Some not agreeing. Some squeaking. Squeaking. Ticky ticky ticky. Tick tocking clocks, tick tocking clocks, tick tocking clocks, tick paradox on the rock, talent. Talent. Do what you love. Do what you love. Do what you're good at. Do what you love. Do what you're good at. Do what you love. Do what you're good at. Useful. Useful. Build. Build. 
bridges with bridges with dance with infinite with infinite patterns patterns express learn grow feel feel the melancholy glow beige boots keith richards mick jagger 13 favorite color favorite color beige beige i cried so hard i cried so hard when i hit the rat oh my god out of time shannon kring and goddess kring Goddess Kring Radio. Shannon Kringen. Goddess Kring. Shannon Kringen. Goddess Kring.